welcome to our YouTube channel where we share our building wisdom or lack thereof with you. Today I'm going to take a few minutes to show you some of the ingenious hidden features in a simple tool, the tape measure. The first totally ingenious thing about tape, and you probably never thought about this, is the shape of the metal itself is an arch. Just like how the Romans used arches to support bridges, this arch supports the tape as it comes out, making it a rigid rule. But when you want to let it back in, this arch doesn't have much strength in this direction. Watch this. I can easily bend it this direction. So when it rolls back around itself this way, it becomes flexible. To demonstrate this another way, I've got my tape turned upside down so that the arch is facing up on this tape. And I'm pushing down with about 10, 15 pounds of force right there. You'll notice that the tape is rigid, does not break. Now we're gonna flip it over. Now this is the opposite direction and I'm gonna put about 10 pounds of force on it. That was about one pound actually. And uh, it broke right there easily. So. That's a pretty amazing and ingenious way to design something so that you can have something rigid turn into something that's not rigid and roll up in here 25, 30, 40 feet. That's just crazy if you think about it. Uh, the engineering in this um, is more than you'd ever think. As a matter of fact, I do lay awake at night and think about tape measures. So let's check out the technology we used before tape measures and that was a fold out ruler. Now this thing is rigid no matter what you do to it. So the only way to get it compact enough to put it in your pocket is to fold it up, which is slow. And also it only folds out to about six feet. So obviously the tape measure is a much better tool. A totally ingenious thing about a tape measure that nobody really thinks about is how the end of this tape measure operates. Uh, you'll see that it looks like it's loose. It looks like this thing was defective when it was manufactured. Uh, and that's because these holes around these pins are a little bigger than the actual pins. Now that's on purpose, that's not an accident. And that's so that when you butt your tape into a material, that slides back and makes up for about this 16th inch metal plate that you're using to butt into. But when you wanna hook and pull a measurement this way, this end will actually slide out due to this slack right here and it will make up the difference for this same thin 16th inch hook on this piece of metal so that you'll get the same measurement whether you hook or you butt. It'll give you the same number exactly. That's awesome. Thank you for your assistance, AJ. You're welcome. Now I've got a little demonstration set up to show you the other trick that these hook ends have on tape measures, and it has to do with this little slot that you see on the end. Let me show you what it does. So I've got a nail set right here in this piece of wood sticking up a quarter inch. Now I can take my tape measure and hook it over this nail, and you'll notice if you look closely that the nail head is actually poking through this slot on the end of the tape measure. Here's another angle of that, and I know it doesn't seem super impressive, but let me tell you two reasons why it is an impressive feature and why it's super important to get accurate measurements. Number one is that you usually set the shaft of the nail, not the head of the nail, on your reference mark that you're trying to measure from. So if you go to pull your tape measure and it butts on the head of the nail instead of the shaft of the nail, you can see that I would be about an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch long on this measurement, which is not good. The other reason this is extremely important is that this nail hook keeps your tape from sliding off the nail left or right. So if you take this tape and change angles or you're pulling up or down, it stays put and it doesn't pop off so you don't have to keep coming back to the hook end of your tape and rehooking it, wasting time on the job. And for any of you guys that are new to construction, if someone asks you to hand them the dumb end of the tape measure on a job, that's what they mean, this end. And if they want the smart end of the tape measure, that means they're gonna take the measurement, and that's this end. The tape that I'm using today has one ingenious feature that most of them don't. I'm gonna demonstrate it right now. This is a Milwaukee Stud 25, and this has a spot where you would grip the tape naturally, 
that you can use as a handbrake right there. Instead of having to lock the mechanism, if you wanna stop the tape from reeling back in, just put your finger right there on that spot where your finger lands naturally anyway. Really ingenious and sort of unknown feature about tape measures is that the actual tape box itself usually measures three inches. You need to run the tape out and bump the back of the tape box to the opposing wall and simply add three inches to your measurement to get a measurement where you can't bend the tape into a corner very easily. Demonstrate this. We're gonna roll this tape across a hallway and bump it into the wall on the back of the tape. Read the scale, 57 inches. Now we're just gonna add three inches to that. This hallway is 60 inches wide. So tape measures are laid out into inches, uh, half inches, quarter inches, eighth inches, and down to a sixteenth of an inch on most framing ones. But the other ingenious thing about this layout is they're also subdivided into several other layouts that help you get your framing correct when you're building houses. So all of the red marks on this tape, 16, 32, 48, are 16 inch on center layout, and that's a common stud layout. You'll also notice a diamond at 19.2 inches and a diamond at about 38 and 3 8 inches. Now this is another layout that is 19.2 inches on center. This 19.2 layout is most commonly used on floor trusses that are three and a half inches wide. And the one magic number on a tape measure is eight foot. That's where the two foot, 16 inch, and you see the diamond, 19.2 centers, all land on the same layout. And it's like that every eight foot down the length of the tape. And that's no accident because a regular piece of sheeting on a house measures 96 inches. So a tape measure makes it simple, easy to do layout when you're building houses by its design. You just look for the red squares, the black squares, or the black triangles to mark your layouts. So hopefully I didn't bore you guys to death with all that. Uh, I find it really interesting because I use tape measures all the time, all day. So happy measuring to you. Measure twice and cut once. That's what they say. Thank you.